Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, young and old, old and new. Greetings from NLT in Golden, Colorado, right here in the U.S. of A. Tonight, we bring you a real feel-good heart warmer, perfect for this or any Christmas Eve. It's a wonderful life. We begin our story in the little town of Bedford Falls, New York, U.S. of A., where a number of people in the town are praying for their dear friend, a typical American dreamer named George Bailey. Dear God, please look over my husband, George. George is a good boy, you know that. My son has always gone out of his way to give others a hand. Now it's him who needs the help. Help my big brother, George. He's done so much for all of us, more for me than I remember. I remember all the times he would stay late after work and not ask a cent. The world needs more like George Bailey. George Bailey never thinks about himself. I wouldn't have a roof over my head if it, if it wasn't for him, I would have given up long ago. All I think about is myself. I must have taken the last cent he had. He had no sense of business, that George Bailey, just like his father. None of the Baileys were ever businessmen. It's his own fault if he wasn't prepared for times like these. At times like these, I can't help but think it's all my fault. Help him, father. It's me who's put him through all this. Something's the matter with daddy. Should we pray for him, mommy? Yes, Suzu. Pray. Pray very hard. The voices carry heavenward, and Joseph, the superintendent of angels, summons Clarence, an apprentice angel. Uh, you sent for me, sir? Yes, Clarence. A man down on earth needs our help. Uh, splendid. Is he sick? No, worse. He's discouraged. At exactly 10.45 p.m. tonight, Earth time, that man will be thinking seriously of throwing his life away. Oh dear, dear, his life. Then I have only an hour to dress. What are they wearing now? You will spend that hour getting acquainted with George Bailey. Uh, sir, if I should accomplish this mission, I mean, might I perhaps win my wings? Uh, I've been waiting over 200 years now, and people are beginning to talk. What's that book you've got there? The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, sir. I was reading it when you sent for me. Oh, fine book. Excellent. Well, you do a good job with George Bailey, and we'll see about your wings. Ah, oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Now, if you're going to help George, you'll want to know a little something about him. Look, see the town? Why, yes. A group of young boys uh, sledding down a snow-covered hill and onto the ice. This is amazing. Yippee! Who is that? That's your problem. George Bailey. A uh, boy? That's him when he was 12, back in 1919. Something happens here you'll have to remember later on. And here comes the scare baby, my kid brother Harry Bailey. Yeah, Come on, Harry, you, you can get it. Yeah, you can make yeah, it. Come on, yeah, it's yeah, fun. Don't, don't be scared. I'm not scared. Yippee! Help! Help! Oh dear, Harry's fallen into the ice. I'm coming, Harry! Make a chain, gang, a chain! So his brother fell through the ice, but George saved him. Yes, Clarence. And ever since, George has had a bad ear. All that icy water, you understand. A, a bad ear? Uh, yes, sir. The other event came a few months later. George took an after-school job at Old Man Gower's drugstore. It's me, Mr. Gower. George Bailey. You're late. Y yes, sir. Hello, George. Hello, Mary. Hello, Violet. Two cents worth of shoelaces, Violet? Mary was here first. I'm still thinking. Shoelaces? Please, Georgie. I like him. You like every boy. What's wrong with that? Here you are. Made up your mind yet, Mary? I'll take chocolate. With coconuts? I don't like coconuts. You don't like coconuts? Say, Brainless, don't you know where coconuts come from? Look at here, from Tahiti, Fiji Islands, the Coral Sea. What's that you got there? A new magazine. I never saw it before. Of course you never. Only us explorers can get it. I've been nominated for membership in the National Geographic Society. Let me get your ice cream. Is this the ear you can't hear on? George Bailey, I'll love you till the day I die. I'm going out exploring someday, you watch. And I'm going to have a couple of harems, 
and maybe three or four wives. Wait and see. George. George! Yes, sir. You're not paid to be a canary. Yes, sir. Goodbye, George. Goodbye, Mary. What was that piece of paper uh, George just picked up? It's a telegram from Mr. Gawa. He found out this morning that his son died of influenza. Oh, awful. Yes, and he spent the afternoon drowning his grief in whiskey. M Mr. Gower, do you want something? Anything? No. Anything I can do back no. here? No. I'll get them, sir. W what's this bottle, Mr. Gower? Oh, never mind that. Uh, uh, go take those capsules over the Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Blaine's. Mrs. Blaine's. Yes, sir. They had the diphtheria there, haven't they, sir? Um... Is it a charge, sir? Uh, yes, yes. Charge. Mr. Gower, I think... Uh... Oh, get going! Yes, sir. Mr. Gower? What is it? M Mr. Gower, that, that bottle you used, you put something wrong in those capsules. Who do you think you're talking to? You're hurting my sore ear. You hear what I said? Get out of here! <laughs> Mr. Gower, you, you, you don't know what you're doing. You put something wrong in those capsules. I know you're unhappy. You got that telegram and you're upset. It, it wasn't your fault, Mr. Gower, but look, Mr. Gower, look! This bottle you used to make up the capsules, it, it's poison! Poison? Donate my sore ear again. Poison? Oh, George. George. All, all I wanted to do was make sure, Mr. Gower. I, I won't tell anyone. I know what you're feeling. I won't ever tell a soul. Hope to die, I won't. Oh, George. Uh, did he ever tell anyone about those pills? Not a soul. Uh, whatever happened to that girl? D did he ever go exploring? We'll get there soon enough, Clarence. When George Bailey grew up, he wanted to go to college, but there wasn't the money. So he worked four years in the Building and Loan Association. The Building and Loan Association. George's father was in the Building and Loan business, along with George's Uncle Billy. George, what's the combination to the safe? We wrote it down so you wouldn't forget it. That's right. Uh, uh, where? Your wallet, Uncle Billy. Thanks. Lovable fellow. Just... Forgetful is all. And who is that? That's Henry F. Potter, the richest and meanest man in all the county. Peter! Potter's here! Mr. Bailey, Mr. Bailey, Mr. Bailey. There is nothing quite so loathsome as a family business. Now, Peter, you know what I'm here for? I'm on a very tight schedule, a family to evict at three. Okay, then, Mr. Potter... Here's the thing, I, I just need a little more time, just 30 short days, I'll dig up that 5,000 somehow. Have you put any real pressure on these people of yours to pay their mortgages? T times are hard, Mr. Potter, and a lot of people are out of work. Then foreclose. I can't do that, these families have children. <laughs> They're not my children. But they're somebody's children, Mr. Potter. Are you running a business or a charity ward? Well, all right. Not with my money. Mr. Potter, what makes you such a hard scold character? You have no family, no children. You can't begin to spend all the money you've got. Oh, so I suppose I should give it to miserable failures like you and that idiot brother of yours to spend it for me? He's not a failure. You can't say that about my father. George, George. Thanks, son. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you tonight. Don't let him say that about you, Pop. Tonight! What kind of business are you running here? Good God, man! George worked for his father, saving enough to see him through the university. That summer, though, he was going to Europe. George got a job on the kettle boat and was ready to do a little traveling before college. Old man Gower surprised him with the gift of a great big suitcase. On his way home from the store, he ran into his friends Ernie, the cab driver, Bert, the cop. Hey, Ernie. Uh, hiya, George. Hi, Bert. Hey, George. What's the suitcase for? I'm a rich tourist today. How about driving me home in style? Sure, your highness. Hop in the cabin. For the carriage trade, I put some on my hat. Good afternoon, Mr. Bailey. 
Looks like you're ready to get out of here. Hello, Violet. Hey, you look good. That's some dress you got on there. Oh, this old thing? Why, well, I only wear it when I don't care how I look. See you later. Now, how would you like a... Would I? Wanna come along, Bert? We'll show you the town. No thanks. Then I'll get, go home and see what the wife's doing. Family man. man. George saved up his money to go away to college. His bags were packed and he was all set to go. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, it's hard to realize it's the last night in the Bailey boarding house. We're sure gonna miss you here, George. I'm gonna miss you too, Pop. What's the matter? You look tired. Oh, I had another tussle with old Henry Potter today. Oh. I thought when we put him on the board of directors, he'd ease up on us. I wonder what's eating that old money-grubbing buzzard anyway. Oh, he's a sick man. Frustrated and sick. Sick in his mind. Sick in his soul, if he has one. Hates everybody that has anything he can't have. Hates us mostly, I guess. Hey, George, can I borrow your tuxedo studs? Yeah, help yourself, Harry. Well, where are they? In your suitcase? I'm not taking a tuxedo on a cattle boat, you know. Say, where'd you get that fine piece of luggage anyway? Uh, Mr. Gower. A going away present. And one of these days you're gonna see that bag all covered with travel labels. Italy, Baghdad... Hey, why don't you come to the dance tonight? What, and be bored to death? Well, you couldn't want a better death. Lots of pretty girls. Hey, I, I gotta hurry. I wish we could send Harry to college with you, George. Uh, we have that all figured out. You see, Harry will take my job at the building alone, work there for years, and then he'll go. He's pretty young for that job. Well, no younger than I was. You were born older, George. I suppose you've decided what you're going to do when you get out of college? Oh, well, you know, what I've always talked about. Building things, design new buildings, plan modern cities. Still after that first million before you're 30? No, I'll settle for half that in cash. Of course, it's just a hope, but you wouldn't consider coming back to the building alone, would you? I know it's early to talk about it. Oh, I couldn't face being cooped up for the rest of my life in that shabby little office. Oh, I'm sorry, Pop. I, I didn't mean that remark. But this business of nickels and dimes and spending all your life trying to figure out how to save three cents on a length of pipe, I I'd go crazy. I want to go do something big, something important. You know, George, I feel that in a small way, we are doing something important. Satisfying a fundamental urge, it's... Not too much for a man to want his own roof, and walls, and fireplace, and we're helping him get those things in our shabby little office. I know, Dad. I, I wish I felt... But I've been hoarding pennies like a miser in order to... Most of my friends already finished college. I just feel like if I don't get away, I'd bust. Yes, yes, you're right, boy. This town's no place to live if you aren't willing to crawl to Potter. You get yourself an education, and then get out of here. I'm glad you see what I'm talking about. Hey, Pop, you want a shock? I think you're a great guy. Say, I think I'm going to go down on Old Main Street. Last night in town and all. Have a good time, son. Who is that? Why, that's Violet Bick. Oh, the little girl from the candy counter. That's right. Hello, Georgie Porgy. Hello, Vi. What gives? Nothing. Where are you going? Oh, I'll probably end up at the library. Georgie, don't you ever get tired of just reading about things? Yes. What are you doing tonight? Not a thing. Are you game, Vi? What do you say we make a night of it? Oh, I'd love it, Georgie. What'll we do? Let's go out in the field and take off our shoes and walk in the grass. Huh? Then we can go up to Stewart Lake. It's beautiful up there in the moonlight, and we can swim. Then we can climb Mount Bedford and smell the pines and watch the sunrise against the peaks, and we'll stay up there the whole night, and everybody be talking about it. There'll be a terrific scandal. George, have you gone crazy? Walk in the grass in my bare feet? Why, it's ten miles up there to Mount Bedford. You think just because you... you... ugh. Okay, just forget about the whole thing. Forget about what, George? Oh, nothing, Sam. Hey, uh, you remember Mary, don't you? Hi, George. Hi, Mary. 
Say, uh, uh, you wouldn't mind walking Mary home, would you, George? Uh, of course not. Is that okay with you, Mary? Fine by me. Great. Thanks. So, George walked Mary home. Is that important, Joseph? I'd say it is. Because even though Mary lived only four blocks away, it took them two hours to get there. Hot dog, old boy, just like an organ! Gee whiz! You Beautiful. know something? If it wasn't me talking, I'd say you're the prettiest girl in town. Well, why don't you say it? I don't know. Maybe I will. How old are you anyway? Eighteen. Eighteen? Too young or too old? Oh, uh, no, it, just right. Your age fits you. Uh, hey, look where we are. Oh, the old Granville house. Yeah, I gotta throw a rock. Oh, no, don't. I love that old house. Well, no, don't you know about uh, deserted houses? You make a wish and then throw a rock. But, George, it's such a lovely old place. I wish I lived there. In there? I wouldn't live there if I was a ghost. Now watch, watch this. How about it? Pretty good shot, huh? Broke a window. What's your wish, George? Well, not just one wish. A whole hatful, Mary. I'm shaking off this dust of this crummy little town off my feet, and I'm going to see the world. Italy, Greece, the Parthenon, the Colosseum. And then I'm coming back here, and I'll go to college and see what they know. And then I'm going to build things. I'm going to build airfields. I'm going to build bridges a mile long. And then I'm going to... Hey, what, are you going to throw a rock too? Hey, that's pretty good. What'd you wish for, Mary? Oh, no. If I tell you, it may not come true. Hey, hey, Mary, come on, what do you want, huh? D do you want the moon? Uh, all you gotta do is say the word now. Okay, the moon. I'll take it. And then what? Then what? Uh, I'll throw a lasso around it and uh, pull it down. Uh, then you could swallow it and then it'll all dissolve, see? And... The moonbeams would shoot out of your fingers and uh, your toes and the ends of your hair and the... Uh, am I talking too much? Yes! Why don't you kiss her instead of talking her to death? Who's that? Old man Collins on his front porch. Ah! You just wasted on the wrong people. Hey, hey, hold on! Hey, mister, come back out here and I'll show you some kissing that'll put your hair back on your head. You come back out here and... George! George! Uh, Uncle Billy? George, get in the car quick. Your father's had a stroke. I'm sorry. I've got to go, Mary. George's father died that night, Clarence. So, of course, George couldn't go to Europe. But that fall, just as he was ready to leave for college, the directors of the building and loan held a meeting. They were going to appoint a successor. I want the board to know that George gave up his trip to Europe to help straighten things out here these past few months. And it was greatly appreciated. I think that's all we'll need you here for, George. Good luck to you at school. I know you're anxious to make a train. Yes, I have a taxi waiting downstairs. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to get to my real purpose. I claim this institution is not necessary to this town. Therefore, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to dissolve the building and loan and turn its assets and liabilities over to the receiver. It's too soon after Peter Bailey's death to discuss chloroforming the building and loan. It was his faith and devotion that are responsible for this organization. I'll go further than that. I'll say that to the public, Peter Bailey was the building and loan. Oh, that's fine, Potter, coming from you, considering you probably drove him to his grave. Peter Bailey was not a businessman. That's what killed him. Oh, I don't mean any disrespect. God rest his soul. He was... A man of high ideals, so-called. But ideals without common sense can ruin this town. What does that get us? A discontented, lazy rabble instead of a thrifty working class. And all because a few starry-eyed dreamers like Peter Bailey stir them up and fill their heads with a lot of impossible hooey. Now, I say that with the light vision... Just a minute! It... Now hold on, Mr. Potter. You're right when you say my father was no businessman, I know that. Why he ever started this cheap, penny-ante building and loan, I'll never know. But neither you nor anybody else can say anything against his character, because his whole life was... Why, in the 25 years since he and Uncle Billy started this thing, he never once thought of himself. Isn't that right, Uncle Billy? You got that right. 
He didn't save enough money to send Harry to school, let alone me. But he did help a few people get out of your slums, Mr. Potter. And what's wrong with that? Why, here, you're all businessmen here. Doesn't it make them better citizens? Doesn't it make them better customers? You, you said, uh, what'd you say just a minute ago? They had to wait and save their money before they even ought to think of a decent home. Wait, wait for what? Until their children grow up and leave them? Until they're so old and broken down that they... Do you know how long it takes a working man to save $5,000? Just remember this, Mr. Potter, that this rabble you're talking about, they do most of the working and paying and living and dying in this community. Well, is it too much to have them work and pay and live and die in a couple of decent rooms in a bath? Anyway, my father didn't think so. People were human beings to him, but to you, a warped, frustrated old man, they're cattle. Well, in my book, he died a much richer man than you'll ever be. I'm not interested in your book. I'm talking about the building and loan. I know very well what you're talking about. You're talking about something you can get your fingers on and it's galling you. That's what you're talking about. Well, I've said too much. You're the board here. You do what you want with this thing. Just one more thing, though. This town needs this measly one-horse institution if only to have some place where people can come without crawling to Potter. Come on, Uncle Billy. Sentimental hogwash! I want my motion on the table! They're just coming out of the board meeting. I'll have to call you back. What happened, George? All we heard was a lot of yelling. Boy, oh boy, Matilda. You should have heard, George. Yeah, they're voting us down in there. George, get out of here. You miss your boat trip? Do you want to miss on college, too? Don't worry about the board. They're just putting out a, a side of business. So what? I can get another job. I'm only 55. You're 58. George! George! They voted Potter down. We're still in business. Whoopee! We're still in business. We're still in business. But there's one condition, George. They've appointed you to take your father's place. Uh, appoint me? But I'm going to college. Uh, Uncle Billy, here. Here's your man. You can keep him on. That's all right. Now let's get this thing straight. I'm leaving. Uh, I'm leaving right now. I'm going to school. This is my last chance. But George, you've got to take it. They'll vote with Potter otherwise. So, George Bailey didn't go to college. That's right, Clarence. He gave his money to his brother Harry, and Harry went instead. Uh, but what happened to that girl, uh, you know, Mary? Oh, George saw her now and then. Not very often, though, because Mary went away to school, too. Anyway, George waited four years more for Harry to come back and take over the building and loan. Then he could still see the world. Plan to work in the oil fields of Venezuela. There she blows! Say, Uncle Billy, do you know what the three most wonderful salads on earth are? Breakfast is served, lunch is served, dinner is served. No, no, no. Anchor chains, plane motors, and train whistles. Here's the professor now. Well, if it isn't George Geographic, explore Bailey. Uncle Billy, you haven't changed a bit. Nobody ever changes around here, you know that. Oh, am I glad to see you. Say, where's Mother? She's home cooking the fatty calf. Come on, let's go. Wait, wait. This is Ruth Dagan. Ruth Dagan Bailey, if you don't mind. Huh? Well, I wired you I had a surprise. Here she is. Meet the wife. Well, what do you know? Wife? Well, how do you do? What am I doing? Congratulations, congratulations. Harry, why didn't you tell somebody? What's a pretty girl like you doing a marrying this two-headed brother of mine? Well, I'll tell you, it's purely mercenary. My father offered him a job. Oh, he gets you and a job? Harry's cup runneth over. Come on, Ruth. Let's start ahead and leave the bags for the fellas. All right. George, about that job, um, Ruth spoke out of turn. I never said I'd take it. You've been holding the bag here for four years. Well, I won't let you down. It's all right, Harry. It's all right. And that night, the homecoming for Harry became his wedding party. Uncle Billy familiarized himself with the spirits. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy! I feel so good I could spit and pot his eye. I think I will. What do you say? Uh, maybe, maybe I should go home. If you just uh, point me in the right direction. Right down there. That way, huh? Okay, old belly and lone pal. See you later. I, I'm alright. I'm, I'm, I'm alright. George? Yeah, I'm out here on the porch, mother. 
I just thought I would get some air. Well, how do you like the new sister-in-law? She's swell. Looks like she'll keep Harry on his toes. Yeah, keep him out of Bedford Falls, anyway. George, hmm. Do you know that Mary Hatch is back from school? Huh? Yeah, yeah. Nice girl, Mary. Uh-huh. Oh, stop grumbling. Give me one good reason you shouldn't call on Mary. Well, Sam Wainwright. Sam's crazy about her. Well, she's not crazy about him. Well, now how do you know that? Did she discuss it with you? Besides, Sam is away in New York, and you're here in Bedford Falls. And all's fair in love and war? I don't know about war. All right, Mother. I think I'll go out and find the girl and do a little passionate necking. Oh, George. Bye, Mrs. Bailey. By the way, do you want any books at the library? The library? George? George, you go and see Mary, you hear? Hello, George. Hello, Mary. I just happened to be passing by. Your mother just phoned and said you were on your way over to pay me a visit. My mother just called you? Well, how did she know? Well... I, I, I didn't tell anybody. I just went for a walk and happened to be passing by. Would you like to come in? Well, I guess since I'm here. Say, where'd you get that dress? Do you like it? It's alright. Uh, I thought you'd go back to New York with Sam and Francie and uh, the rest of them. Oh, I worked there a couple of vacations, but I don't know. I guess I was homesick. Homesick for Bedford Falls? Yes, and my family, and... Oh, everything. Would you like to sit down? All right, for a minute. Uh, I still can't understand it, though. You know, I didn't tell anybody I was coming over here. Would you rather leave? Uh, no, no, I, I don't want to be rude. It was nice about Harry and Ruth, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's all right. Well, don't you like her? Well, of course I like her. She's a peach. Oh, it's just marriage in general you're not enthusiastic about, huh? No. Marriage is okay for Harry and Sam Wainwright and you. Mary, Mary, who's out there with you? It's George Bailey, Mother. George Bailey? What does he want? I don't know. What do you want, George? Me? Not, not a thing. I just came in to get warm. He's making violent love to me, Mother. You tell him to go back home, and don't you leave the house. Sam White promised to call from New York tonight, didn't he? What did you come here for? Your mother needed... Uh, you know, I didn't come here for... Uh, to... to... Oh, why don't you go home? Uh, I don't know. You tell me. You're supposed to be the one who has all the answers. You tell me. I don't know why I came here in the first place. Mary! The telephone! It's Sam! I'll get it! Hee-haw! Hello, Sam. How are you? Aw, oh, great. Gee, it's good to hear your voice again. Oh, well, that's awfully sweet of you, Sam. There's an old friend of yours here, George Bailey. Uh, you mean old Mossback, George? Yes, old Mossback, George. Oh, he ha I'll put him on. Wait a minute, I'll call him. Uh, George! He doesn't want to speak to George, you idiot. He does so. He asked for him. George, Sam wants to speak to you. Hello, Sam. Hey, a fine pal you are. What are you trying to do, steal my girl? What do you mean? Nobody's trying to steal your girl. Uh, no, wait, wait, wait a minute. I want to talk to both of you. Tell Mary to get on the extension. Mother's on the extension. I am not. We can both hear you. George, just put your head a little closer. Okay. There, that's better. We're listening, Sam. All right. I have a big deal coming up that's going to make us all rich. Uh, George, you remember that night at Martini's Bar when you told me about making plastics out of soybeans? Huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, soybeans, yeah. Well, my father's checked into it, George. See? And now he's going to build a factory outside of Rochester. How do you like that? Rochester? Well, why Rochester? Well, uh, why not? Can you think of anything better? Oh, I don't know. Why not right here in Bedford Falls? You remember that old tool machinery works? You tell your father he can get that for a song. And all the labor he wants, too. Half the time was ha thrown out of work when they closed down. Th that's so, uh... Well, I'll tell him. Hey, th that sounds great. Oh, baby, I knew you'd come through. Now, here's the point, George. I, I may have a job for you. That is, uh, unless you're still married to the old broken-down building and loan. Uh, oh, uh, Mary? I'm here. 
Hey, you tell that guy I'm giving him a chance of a lifetime. You hear? He says it's the chance of a lifetime. Give me that phone. Now you listen to me, Mary. I don't want any plastics, and I don't want my job. I don't want to get married ever to anyone. Do you understand that? I want to do what I want to do, and you're you're not going to... Oh, Mary. George. Oh, Mary. I love you. George, I love you too. We will return to NLT's presentation of It's a Wonderful Life in just a few moments. It's a wonderful life. George and Mary were married. In the following wedding and reception, George's old pal Ernie, the cab driver, drove the happy couple to the train station. Hey, where are you two going on this here now, honey road? We're gonna shoot the works, Ernie. A whole week in New York, a whole week in Bermuda, the highest hotels, the oldest champagne, the richest caviar, the hottest music, and the prettiest wife. Here's the kitty, Ernie. Two thousand dollars. I feel like a bootlegger's wife. So you're finally getting out of Bedford Falls, huh? Then what? Then what, honey? After that, who cares? That does it. Hey, Mrs. Bailey, I haven't kissed hey, you since. George, there, there's something funny going on over there. Look! Look over there! At the bank! It looks like a run! Huh? Pull over here a minute, will you, Ernie? George, let's not stop. Please, let's go straight to the station. Uh, now wait a minute, I, I better see what it is. I'll be right back. George, please! George! What is this, Uncle Billy? A holiday? Why are the doors locked? There's a crowd out front. This is a pickle, George. All right, now what happened? Uh, all I know is the bank called our loan. I had to hand out all our cash. All of it? Every last cent of it. Holy mackerel! And then I got scared, George. I closed the doors. Our charter says we need to stay open until 6 o'clock or we'll lose our license. Bailey, brother, Billy. Get me, George. George, it's Potter. Hello? George, there's a rumor around town that you've closed your doors. Is that true? No, it isn't. Do you need any police? Mobs can get pretty ugly sometimes, you know. We're fine. We'll see. Now, George, I'm going all out to help in this crisis. I've just guaranteed the bank sufficient funds to meet their needs. They'll close for a week and then reopen. I may lose a fortune, but I'm willing to guarantee your people too. Just tell them to bring their shares over here, and I will pay 50 cents on the dollar. Ah, uh, you don't miss a trick, do you, Potter? Well, you're gonna miss this one. If you close your doors before 6 p.m., you'll never reopen. 
He just took over the bank, Billy. Open the doors, let him in. You can't just like that. Now, just remember that this thing isn't as black as it appears. I have some news for you, folks. I've just talked to Old Man Potter, and he's guaranteed cash payments at the bank. How about our money, Judge? Where's our money? Now, please, wait a minute. Listen to me. You're thinking this place so wrong. The money's not here. Your money's in people's houses. In the Kennedy house, in the McLaren house, and in your house, and a hundred others. Now, what are you going to do? Foreclose on them? I got $242 in here, and $242 isn't going to break anybody. All right, Charlie, all right. Now, you'll get your money in 60 days. 60 days? Well, now that's what you agreed to when you bought your shares. I got my money. Old man Potter's taking over the bank. He'll pay you 50 cents on every I dollar. Piece of evidence. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Please, folks. Please, don't leave. I beg of you not to do this. If, if Potter gets a hold of your shares, he'll be owning this building alone. He's got the bank, he's got the bus line, he's got the department stores, and now he's after us because he wants to keep you living in his shacks and paying the kind of rent he decides to charge. Now we can get through this, all right, but we gotta stick together. We've gotta have faith in each other. My husband's out of work. We need money. I got doctor bills to pay. I can't feed my kids with faith. How much do you need? We've still got some money. We've got $2,000 from the wedding. Hey, Mary. I've got $2,000 here. This will tide us over until the bank reopens. All right, Charlie, now how much do you need? $242. Ah, come on, just enough to tide you over until the bank reopens. $242. Okay, okay, Uncle Billy, give Charlie $242. Okay, alright, Ed, now how much do you need to just to get by? Eh, $20, I suppose. Now we're talking. Now, Mrs. Thompson, how about you? But it's your own money, George. Never mind that. Now, how much do you want, Mrs. Thompson? Could I have seventeen fifty? Seven. Bless your heart, of course you can have it. Uncle Billy, give her seventeen fifty. Pay it back when you can now. Pay it back when you can. All right, all right. Who's next? Look at the clock. Look. Five seconds. Four seconds. Three, two, one. Six o'clock. We made it. Lock that door, Uncle Billy. Boy, we're still in business, and we even got two bucks left. Bailey Brothers, building it. Just a minute. George, let us call for you. Look, will you get my wife on the phone? She's probably over at her mother's. Mrs. Bailey is on the phone. Yeah, I don't want Mrs. Bailey. I want my wife. Oh, Mrs. Bailey. Oh, that's my wife. Mary? Hello? Listen, dear, I'm sorry. What? What? Come home? What home? 320 Sycamore? Well, whose home is that? The Waldorf Hotel, huh? That doesn't look like the Waldorf. Oh, no. Number 320 Sycamore was the old Granville house, the one George and Mary threw rocks at and made wishes. Mary had prepared the house, including a turkey dinner, romantic decorations, and even a marriage bed. Welcome home, Mr. Bailey. Well, I'll be. Remember the night we broke the windows in this old house? This is what I wished for. Darling, you're wonderful. Yes, sir. That's where they spent their honeymoon. That's where they started their lives together. Mary made the leaky old house a home, while George toiled away at the building and loan office, providing houses for people like Giuseppe Martini. Hey, Martini, you written a new house? Rent? Ha, ah, you hear that, Mr. Bailey? I own this house. Me, a Giuseppe Martini. I own my own house. Uh, uh, no more we live like pigs in Potter's Field. We have something for you and your family, Mr. Martini. George and I bring something for all the new owners. Uh, for the Martinis? Maria, come quick! Our first housewarming gifts! Uh, bring the kids! Bread, so that this house may never know hunger. Salt, that life may always have flavor. And wine, that joy and prosperity may reign forever. Enter the Martini Castle! Bailey houses were popping up all over the place, mostly owned by people that used to live in Potter's Field. And Potter had just enough of that. So, after a couple of years, old man Potter decided to call our George into his office. Sit down, George. Sit down. Uh, have a cigar? Thank you, sir. Quite a cigar, Mr. Potter. <laughs> you like it? I'll send you a box. Well, I... I suppose I'll find out sooner or later, but just what exactly did you want to see me about? <laughs> George, now that's just what I like so much about you. <laughs> George, 
I'm an old man, and most people hate me. But I don't like them either, so that makes it all even. You know just as well as I do that I run practically everything in this town but the Bailey Building alone. You know also that for a number of years I've been trying to get control of it. Or kill it. But I haven't been able to do it. You have been stopping me. In fact, you have beaten me, George. And that takes some doing. Take during the Depression, for instance. You and I were the only ones that kept our heads. You saved the building and loan. I saved all the rest. Yes. Well, most people say you stole all the rest. The envious ones say that, George. The suckers. Now, let's look at your side. Young man, 27, 28, making, say, 40 a week. 45. Uh, 45. 45. Now, if you were some ordinary yokel, I would say you were doing fine. But George Bailey is intelligent, ambitious. He hates the building and loan almost as much as I do. He's been dying to get out of town ever since he was born. A young man, the smartest one of the crowd, mind you, who has to sit by and watch his friends go places because he's trapped. Trapped into frittering his life away playing nursemaid to a lot of garlic eaters. Do I paint a correct picture, George, or do I exaggerate? What's your point, Mr. Potter? My point is you're the only man in town who's licked me. I want to hire you. Manage my affairs. I'll start you out at mm, $20,000 a year. $20,000 $20, a year? You wouldn't mind living in the nicest house in town, buying your wife a lot of fine clothes, a couple of business trips to New York a year, maybe once in a while, Europe? You wouldn't mind that, would you, George? Would I? You're not talking to somebody else around here, are you? Are you sure you're talking to me? I'm George Bailey, don't you remember me? The building and loan, remember? Yes, George Bailey, whose ship has just come in, providing he has brains enough to climb aboard. Well, what about the building and loan? Thou oh, confound it, man! I'm offering you a three-year contract at $20,000 a year! Is it a deal or isn't it? Mr. Potter, I know I ought to jump at the chance, but... I wonder if you might give me some 24 hours to think about it? Sure, sure, sure. You go home and talk to your wife. Yeah, I'd like that. In the meantime, I'll draw up the papers, and soon you'll be managing my affairs. Your affairs? No. No, the answer's no, doggone it. You sit around here and you spin your little webs, and you think the whole world revolves around you and your money. Well, it doesn't, Mr. Potter. In the whole vast configuration of things, I'd say you were nothing but a scurvy little spider. What did Mr. Potter want, George? Nothing, nothing. Just talk. Nothing. Oh, gee, Mary Hatch, why in the world would you ever marry a guy like me anyway? To keep from being an old maid. I was gonna see the world. I was gonna build things. I was gonna give you the moon. What have I given you? What have I given you? Not even a new dress. Not for months. You could have married Sam Wainwright, anybody else in town. I didn't want to marry anybody else in town. I want my baby to look like you. You didn't even have a honeymoon. I promised you, you... Your what? My baby. Your... You mean... Mary, you're on the nest? George Bailey Lasso Stork. Well, Mary had her baby. A boy. You don't say. Then she had a girl. Well, what do you know? Night after night. George would come home late from the office. Things went good with the building and loan. Potter was really bearing down hard. Then came the war. Mary had another baby by then, but still had time to run the USO. Gower and Uncle Billy sold war bonds. Violet entertained the troops. But the cop was wounded in North Africa, got the Silver Star. Ernie the taxi driver parachuted in France. Harry? <laughs> Harry Bailey topped them all. A Navy flyer who shot down 15 planes, two of them as they were about to crash into a transport full of soldiers. Yes, but George, what about George? George? 4F on account of his ear. George fought the Battle of Bedford Falls. Air, war Air raid warden, paper drives, scrap drives, rubber drives. 
On VE day, he wept and prayed. On VJ day, he wept and prayed again. We're uh, getting pretty close to today, aren't we, sir? Yes, Clarence. You know almost everything you have to know about George Bailey. Except what happened that finds him down there at this moment wanting to die. Well, sir. Well? Well, today's the day before Christmas, and Billy is at the bank to make a deposit when he, he ran into old man Potter. Well, well, well. Mr. Henry F. Potter. Come to the bank to deposit some more loot, huh? Sure, you old fool. How do you like the news in the paper, Mr. Potter? Harry Bailey wins Congressional Medal of Honor. Just can't keep those Bailey boys down now, can you? Let me see that newspaper. Here you go. Sorry, I can't chat, you old thief. Gotta make a deposit. Good morning, Mr. Bailey. Good morning, horse. Here you are, the deposits in the bank book, and a very Merry Christmas to you. Uh, you too, Mr. Bailey. Say, you've forgotten something, haven't you? What's that? You want to make a deposit? Well, certainly. Well, it's customary to bring the money with you. Oh, uh, 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 it's gone. Where'd I put it? Where'd I put that money? A terrible thing, Clarence. Terrible. Uncle Billy couldn't find the money because the envelope would... The eight thousand dollars was folded up in the newspaper that he gave to old man Potter. At the same time as Billy started looking for the deposit, Violet came to visit George at the building and loan. Oh, hello, Vi. Suppose you're getting things set back at the house for the party tonight. You know you're invited. What's wrong? You see right through me, don't you? How much do you need? I hate doing this to you, George, but I won't be asking for any more after this. You plan on robbing a bank, Vi? I'm going to Manhattan. What's in Manhattan? Why, everything's in Manhattan. A new start, at least. That's a big step, Vi. What's the matter with starting a new life right here in Bedford Falls? Well, I'll be. Never thought I'd hear that from you, George Bailey. I thought you hated this place. I did, but this town has a charm of its own. You should give tours, maybe. I'm just thinking of you, Violet. Manhattan's a big place to take on your own. I've made a decision. There's a midnight train tonight, and I plan to be on it. It takes a lot of character to leave your hometown and start all over again. Here. Here's some dough. No, George, don't. What do you want to do? Hawk your furs in that hat? Want to walk up to New York? You know they charge for meals and rent up there just the same as they do in Bedford Falls. Yeah, sure. It's a loan. That's my business, building a loan. Besides, you'll get a job. Good luck to you. I'm glad I know you, George Bailey. Say hello to New York for me. Merry Christmas, George. George! George! Uncle? What's going on? The bank examiner's coming today and I- Today? Yeah, yeah, he wants the accounts payable. What's the matter with you? The money! The 8,000! I... I... What, what, Uncle Billy? What happened to it? I don't know how I was going to deposit it when I went to the bank. I didn't have it. $8,000, Uncle Billy! The bank examiner's in town and it's not our money! It belongs to the depositors! I'm so sorry, George. I just don't know what happened. Well, the first place you look is in your coat pocket. I told you to put it in there when you left. I'm no good to you, George. I'm no good. Let's go, then. Uh, we have to retrace your steps. We'll leave no stone unturned. And as George and Billy went looking for the deposit, Potter had a meeting with the state bank examiner, Miss Sadie Vance. The whole town's turned upside down with the Bailey boys' homecoming, Congressional Medal and all. I guess they do things like that. May I look at your paper? Go ahead. <gasps> this is a deposit from Bailey. That old fool Billy Bailey gave me that newspaper. Well, you're going to deposit it for him, right? Potter? To think you would make such a foolish mistake! Look how much it is! There's eight thousand dollars here. <laughs> what a Christmas present! And he doesn't even know it! Ha! Just a minute here, Potter. I know you've been giving the Baileys a hard time far back as I can remember. Why? 
I don't have to give answers to you. You're just a state examiner. Yes, I am. But I am unimpressed by your buying off everyone in town. Oh, that's it. You can never buy the Baileys. What? You heard what I said. The Baileys have always stood for something you always wanted and are so jealous of. They're honest. You're fired! <laughs> you can't fire me. I'm state appointed. And what's more, I'm not going to turn my back. This is stealing from the Baileys. Something like this would certainly cause them to fold. Yes, and after 25 years... Finders Keepers, you know that? He gave me the money. It was his own fault. Besides, there's not a court in the country that would find me guilty. And we all know why. How's your family, Sadie? My family? I know how little state positions pay. What would you say to a little Christmas bonus? I want no part of this. That's not what I've heard. What are you insinuating, Potter? I will not be turned down. What do you want me to do? I want you to pay the Baileys a surprise visit. You'll see the records. They'll be short. You know the rest. At last, the Baileys will be where they belong. Down for good! I know just what to do. And did you put the envelope in your pocket? Yeah, maybe. Uh, Uncle Billy, we've got to find that money. I'm no good to you, George. I... Do you have any secret hiding place here in the house? I've gone all over the house, even in rooms that have been locked since I lost Aunt Laura. Listen to me, think! I can't think anymore, George. It hurts. Where's that money, you stupid silly old fool? Do you realize what this means? It means bankruptcy and scandal and prison. One of us is going to jail. Well, it's not going to be me. Hello, darling. Hello, Daddy! Daddy, did you bring the wreath? What wreath? The Merry Christmas wreath for the window. I left it at the office. Is it snowing? Yeah, it just started. Where's your coat and hat? Left them at the office. What's the matter? Nothing's the matter. Everything's all right. Oh, isn't it wonderful about Harry? We're famous, George. I bet I had 50 calls today about the parade, the banquet. Your mother's so excited. She... Must she keep playing that? I have to practice for the party tonight, Daddy. Mommy says we can stay up until midnight and sing Christmas carols. Can you sing, Daddy? Better hurry and shave, George. The families will be here soon. Families? I don't want families over here. Excuse me. Excuse me. Have a hectic day? Oh yeah, another big red leather day for the Baileys. Daddy, the Browns next door have a new car. You should see it. Well, what's the matter with our car? Isn't it good enough for you? Yes, Daddy. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse you for what? I, 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 I burped. All right, darling. You're excused. Now go upstairs and see what little Zuzu wants. What's the matter with Zuzu? Oh, she got a cold. Caught it coming home from school. They gave her a flower for a prize, and she didn't want to crush it, so she didn't button up her coat. What is it, a sore throat? Well, the doctor says it's nothing serious. Was the doctor here? I called him right away. Is she running a temperature? Just a teensy one. Gosh, it's this old house. I don't know why we all don't have pneumonia. This drafty old barn? Might as well be living in a refrigerator. Why do we have to live here in the first place and stay around this measly, crummy old town? George, what's wrong? Wrong? Everything's wrong. You call this a happy family? Why do we have to have all these kids? Dad, how do you spell frankincense? I don't know. Ask your mother. Where are you going? Up to see Zuzu. Hi, Daddy. Well, uh, what happened to you? I want a flower. Where do you think you're going? Want to give my flower a drink. Here, give Daddy the flower. I'll give it a drink. Look, Daddy, some of the petals came off. Paste it. Yeah, all right now. I'll paste this together. There it is, good as new. Give the flower a drink. Now, will you do something for me? Will you try to get some sleep? I'm not sleepy. I want to look at my flower. I know, but 
You just go to sleep, and then you can dream about it. And it'll be a whole garden. It will? Uh-huh. Telephone. I'll get it. Hello? Yes, this is Mrs. Bailey. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Welch. The doctor says she'll be out of bed in time for her Christmas dinner. Is that Zuzu's teacher? Yes. Let me speak to her. Hello, Mrs. Welch. This is George Bailey. Say, what kind of a teacher are you anyway? What do you mean sitting there home like that half naked? George! Is this the sort of thing we pay taxes for? To have teachers like you? Silly, stupid, careless people who send our kids home without any clothes on? Oh, that's stupid. Hello? Mrs. Welch? I want to apologize. Hello? Hello? She hung up. I'll hang her up. Now, who do you think you are? Hello? Who is this? Oh, Mr. Welch. Okay, that's fine, Mr. Welch. Gives me a chance to tell you what I really think of your wife. George. Will you get out and let me handle this? Hello? Oh, you will, huh? Okay, Mr. Welch, anytime you think you're a man enough. Hello? Any... Ugh. Daddy, how do you spell hallelujah? What do you think I am, a dictionary? Janie, haven't you learned that silly little tune yet? You played it over and over again, now stop it, stop it! George, what are you doing? I'm... I'm sorry, Mary. Janie, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to... You go on to practice. Pete, I owe you apology, too. I'm sorry. What did you want to know? Nothing, Daddy. What's the matter with everybody? Janie, go on! I told you to practice! Now go on! Play! Oh, Daddy... George, why must you torture the children? Why don't you... Mary... Where's Daddy going? Bedford 247, please. Is Daddy in trouble? Yes, Pete. Shall I pray for him? Yes, Janie. Pray very hard. Me too? You too, Tommy. Hello, Uncle Billy? So, that's it, George. You're short $8,000 in the books, eh? Oh, please, Mr. Potter, I'll pay you any sort of interest, if you still want the building alone. You say it was lost. Have you notified the police? No, sir, I haven't done that yet. Harry's homecoming tomorrow. <laughs> Why did you come to me? What about your good friend, Sam Wainwright? I can't get hold of him. He's in Europe. <sighs> what kind of security would I have, George? What collateral? I have some life insurance, a $15,000 policy. How much is your equity in it? Five hundred dollars. <laughs> and you want eight thousand? Look at you! You used to be so cocky. You were going to go out and conquer the world. You once called me a warped, frustrated old man. What are you but a warped, frustrated young man? Crawling in here on your hands and knees for help? No securities, no stocks, no bonds. You're worth more dead than you are alive. Why don't you go to the riffraff you love so much and ask them for help? I'll do anything, Mr. Parter. Please, please help me. My, my wife, my kids. You know what I'm going to do for you? As a stockholder of the building and loan, I'm calling the state examiner to get a warrant for your arrest. Misappropriation of funds, manipulation... Mr. Potter, please, you can't! They can't arrest me! <laughs> Go on and run! You can't hide in a little town like this! <laughs> Merry Christmas, George! We will return to MLT's presentation of It's a Wonderful Life. And now, more from our sponsors.
And now, the dramatic conclusion of It's a Wonderful Life. A Merry Christmas! I'm glad you come! How about some of the good spaghetti? Oh, we got everything! Where is George, sir? Where? After running out of Potter's office, George ended up at Martini's bar. He's had a couple of drinks, Glenn. He's just sitting there. What's he saying? Who is he talking Shh. to? God, but if you're up there and you can hear me, show me the way. I'm at the end of my rope. Are you alright, George? You want somebody to take you home? Uh, why you drink so much, my friend? You don't feel good. Please, go home, Mr. Bailey. Bailey? You say Bailey? Which Bailey? This gentleman is Mr. Bailey, a George Bailey. George Bailey, huh? And the next time you talk to my wife like that, you'll get worse. It isn't enough she's slaves teaching your stupid kids how to read and write. You gotta ball her out over the telephone. You get out of here, Mr. Welch. You hit my best friend. You get out. All right, all right. Uh, Mr. Bailey, uh, you, you okay? Who was that? Uh, Mr. Welch, uh, but, uh, but don't worry. He, he don't come in this place no more. I, I get something for your face. It's a bleeding. I'm all right. Uh, please don't go away, Mr. Bailey. Uh, please don't. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. George is headed to the bridge now, Clarence. Can you see him? He looks like he's going to jump. It's time, Clarence. Excuse me, uh, you there. Have you got the time? My watch is dead. Oh, uh, thanks, just the same. Uh, help! Help me! I, I can't swim! Hold it, mister! I I'm coming! Now, what in Sam Hill are the two of you doing? This storm's not fit for mana beasts. Now get out of that water. Are you are you two all right? Do you need a doctor? No, I, I'm all right. No, I am fine. Uh, this underwear, I I didn't have time to get anything stylish. Uh, my wife gave me this on my last birthday. I passed away in it. Passed away? <laughs> oh, uh, I see. Tom Sawyer is dying out too. Who? Uh, my book. I left in such a hurry, I brought Tom Sawyer with me. You should read the new book Mark Twain is working on. How did you happen to fall in? Oh, uh, I, I jumped in. I jumped in to save you. You jumped in to save me? Well, I did, didn't I? You didn't go through with it, did you? Go through with what? Suicide. It's against the law to commit suicide around here. Yeah, it's against the law where I come from, too. Where do exactly do you come from? Heaven. What? I had to act quickly. That, that's why I jumped in. I knew if I were drowning, you would try to save me. And you see, you did. And that's how I saved you. Oh, that's very funny. Your lip is bleeding, George. Yeah, I got a bust in the jaw and the answer a prayer. Oh, no, no, uh, George, I'm the answer to your prayer. How do you know my name? I know all about you. I've watched you grow up from a little boy. What are you, a mind reader or something? Oh, not exactly. Well, who are you then? Uh, Clarence Oddbody, AS2. Oddbody, AS2, what's that, AS2? Uh, Angel, second class. Hey, I... I'm getting out of here. You may not need a doctor, but I sure do. Cheerio, my good man. Hey, look here. Why do you want to save me? Because I'm your guardian angel. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Ridiculous of you to think of killing yourself for money. Eight thousand dollars. Yeah, just things like that. Now, how'd you know that? I told you I'm your guardian angel. I know everything about you. Well, you look like the kind of angel I'd get. Sort of a fallen angel, aren't you? What happened to your wings? I uh, haven't won my wings yet. Uh, that's why I'm an angel, second class. Oh, I see. Uh, but you can help me earn them, George. By... by letting me help you. You don't happen to have 8,000 bucks on? Oh, no, no, we, uh, we don't use money in heaven. Oh, that's right, I keep forgetting. Comes in pretty handy down here, bub. Oh, uh, right. 
I found it out a little late. I'm worth more dead than alive. Uh, now, look, you mustn't say things like that. Uh, I won't get my wings with that attitude. You just don't know all that you've done. If it hadn't been for you, then... Yeah, if it then... hadn't been for me, everybody would be a lot better off. My wife, and my kids, and my friends. Mm, this is not going to be easy. They'd all be better off if I hadn't been born. What did you say? I said I wish I'd never been born. George, that's... that's wonderful. Wonderful? The idea you just gave me. Well, you've... you've got your wish. You've never been born. Never been born? Exactly. No worries. No $8,000 to get. Nothing. You simply don't exist. Hey, wait a minute. This ear of mine. Say something else in that ear. You don't have a bad ear anymore. Don't, don't you see? You're not the George Bailey you think you are. You're, uh, well, you're nobody. Well, that's the doggonest thing. Your lip has stopped bleeding, too, George. What do you know about that? What happened? I need a drink. That's what I need. What about you, Angel? Do you want a drink? Well, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, come on, come on. We'll go as soon as our clothes are dry. Our, our clothes are dry. Hey, so they are. That's funny. Uh, the snow's a lot harder than I thought. Well, look, let's get dressed and we'll stroll over to Martini's and then... Oh, excuse me, I'll stroll, you fly. I, uh, I haven't got my wings. You haven't got your wings, that's right. A couple of drinks and we'll both fly. There's a place to sit down. Sit down. Oh, hello, Nick. Welcome to Best Bar in Bedford Falls. Bedford Falls? Don't you mean Pottersville? Pottersville? Hey, where's Martini? Look, I'm the boss. You want a drink or don't you? Okay, alright. Double bourbon quick, huh? Okay. What's yours, bub? I was just thinking of... mulled wine. Huh? Uh, heavy on the cinnamon and, and light on the cloves. Off with you, my lad. And lively now. Hey, look, mister. We serve hard drinks in here for men who want to get drunk fast. We don't need any characters around to give the joint atmosphere. Now, come on, here. Just give him the same as I ordered. He's okay. Two double bourbon. What about this place? It's all changed. All of Bedford Falls has changed. You're having your wish, George. You've never been born. Oh, there will be lots of things you've never seen before. Uh, oh, good. Somebody's just made it. Made what? Every time you hear a bell ring, it means that some angel's just got his wings. What did you say? Look, Clarence, I don't think you better talk about angels around here. Don't they believe in angels? Yeah, they believe in them, but you know, it's just... Well, then, why should people be surprised when they see one? Huh? Don't mind him, Nick. He, he just never grew up. How old are you anyway, Clarence? Uh, 293. Uh, next May. That does it. How'd you two pixies go? Through the door or out the window? Go on, get. get. Where's Martini? Will you tell him- Stop asking about Martini, he ain't here. Well, well, well. Look who crawled out from whatever hole he's been hiding in. Hey, it's Mr. Gower. Hey, you rummy, didn't I tell you to never come panhandling around here? George, look. Mr. Gower, this is George Bailey, don't you know me? Will you buy me a drink, mister? Just one drink, mister. Binky, throw the rummy out. You got it. Oh, no. Oh, please. Hey, Nick, isn't that Mr. Gower, the druggist? That rumhead spent 20 years in jail for poisoning some kid. If you know him, you must be a jailbird yourself. Binky, here's two more. Get him out of here. You got it, boss. Hey, uh, let, let me help you up. Uh, the snow is quite cold. What's wrong with Mr. Gower? Uh, Mr. Gower doesn't know you, George. You see, George... You weren't there to stop Gower from putting that poison into that prescription. What do you mean I wasn't there? What are you, a hypnotist? Why am I seeing all these strange things here? Uh, don't you understand? It's because you were never born. Then if I wasn't born, who am I? You're nobody. You have no identity. What do you mean, no identity? My name's George Bailey. There is no George Bailey. You have no papers, 
No cards. No driver's license. No 4F card. No insurance policy. Zuzu's pedals! What? Zuzu's pedals! My my little girl, some pedals fell off her flower. I, I told her I'd fix it and stuck them in my pocket, but they're gone too. Everything's gone. But you've been given a great gift, George. Uh, the chance to see what the world would be like if you had never been born. You're crazy! You're crazy as bedbug and you're driving me crazy too! Now look, I'm going home with my wife and family. Do you understand that? And I'm going home alone. All right, you know the drill. Hands behind your back, sister. Keep your hands off me. Why don't you bust someone else for a change? Hey. Hey, officer. Where did the building alone move to? The, the building what? The Bailey building alone. It was up there. That went out of business years ago. Now, all that's left here is this burlesque house. Not so far, Copper. I know Potter. Hey, Violet. Hey, listen, that's Violet Bick. Oh, I know. Believe me. I know. I know that girl. No, who doesn't know? Get out of our way. Taxi! Hey, Ernie. Ernie, take me home. I'm going off my nut. The, where do you live? Ah, oh, doggone it, Ernie. Don't you start pulling that stuff. You know where I live. 23 Sycamore. Now hurry up. Okay. 320 Sycamore? Yeah, yeah, hurry up. Zuzu's sick. All right. Look here, Ernie. Straighten me out here. I've got some bad liquor or something. Listen to me. Now, are you Ernie Bishop, and you live in Bailey Park with your wife and kid? That's right, isn't it? Y you seen my wife? Seen your wife? I've been in your house a hundred times. Look, bud. W what's the idea? I live in a shack in Potter's Field, and my wife ran away three years ago and took the kid. And I ain't never seen you before in my life. Okay, just step on it. Get just get me home. Is this the place? Of course it's the place. Well, this house ain't been lived in for 20 years. Mary? Mary, I'm home! Pete? Tommy, Janie, Zuzu? Where are you? They're not here, George. You have no children. Where are they, Clarence? What have you done with them? All right, put up your hands. What is this? No fast moves. Come on out here, both of you. Bert! Thank heaven you're here, Bert! What's happened to this house? Where's Mary? Where's my kids? Watch him, Bert! Come on, come on. I'm gonna take you down to the station. Bert, now listen to me. It's that fellow there. He says he's an angel. He tried to hypnotize me. Use my nightstick. Bert, I'd hate to do this, but... <laughs> run, George! Run, George! Ma Bailey's boarding house. Well? M Mother? Mother? What do you want? Mother, this is... This is George. I, I thought for sure you'd remember me. George who? If you're looking for a room, there's no vacancy. Oh, Mother, Mother, please try to understand. Something's happened to me. I don't know what it is, but I, I need a place to stay. Please let me stay here. I don't take in strangers. I'm not a stranger. I know everybody you know. Your brother-in-law, Uncle Billy? Do you know him? Well, sure I do. When did you see him last? Today, over at his house. That's a lie. He's been in the insane asylum ever since he lost his business. And if you ask me, that's where you belong. I'm here again, George. My mother, my own mother, didn't even know me. Strange, isn't it? One man's life touches so many others. And when he isn't around, he leaves a pretty big hole, Look you, isn't he? I've heard like th of things like this before. You've got me under some kind of spell. Well, I'm going to get out of it. I've got to. I know I talked to Billy this afternoon, how could he be in an asylum? I've got to snap out of this. Now let me think a minute. Bailey Park! There is no Bailey Park if you weren't here to build it. We'll see. This is Bailey Park? People live here? Pretty grim. This is where Bailey Park's supposed to be? What's this gravestone doing here? What's Why is the name Bailey on it? That wouldn't be yours. My father's name is on it. But what's this other name? Why is my brother Harry's name here? Your brother broke through the ice and drowned at the age of nine. That's a lie! Harry Bailey went to war! He got the Congressional Medal of Honor! He saved the lives of every man on that transport! Every man on that transport died. Harry wasn't there to save them because you weren't there to save Harry. You see, George, you really had a wonderful life. Don't you see what a mistake it would be to throw it away? What do I do now, Clarence? What do I do?! It's your life, George. What happened to Mary, Clarence? Uh, Mary? My wife, Mary? What happened to her if I was never born? 
I'm not supposed to tell you, George. I don't know how you do the things you do, but please, if you know where she is, just let me see her. That's all I need to make a decision. Uh, very well, George, but, but you're not going to like it. Where is she, Clarence? She's an old maid, George. Where is she? Uh, she's just about to close up the library. Oh, there must be some easier way to earn my wings. Is the library closed? It's Christmas Eve. We can't stay open all night. Can I ask you something? I should really be getting home. What is there to go home to? That is none of your business, sir. The library is closed. Maybe you should try back the 26th. Mary, I'm sorry. How do you know my name? All I need is a couple of minutes. I told you, the library is closed. Please, just two minutes. That's all I need. I'll do anything. You sound desperate. I'll help if I can. What is it? Isn't this town Bedford Falls? It used to be, but that was some time ago. I wasn't very old when Potter was elected and took the town, along with its name, for himself. So you do know a place called Bedford Falls? I've seen pictures. It looked like a very nice place. Things have changed, but that's with the times. I have to go. Mary Hatch! You live on Reed Street, a white Victorian? Uh, your bedroom's at the top of the stairs, you turn to the left? You have an older brother named Marty, and you live with your mother, Edwina. How do you know all this? What are you, some crazy man? Stop it! I'm leaving! Don't you know me, Mary? Just let me touch you! Get your hands off me! I'll call a cop! The house you wish for, don't you remember? I told you, I don't know you! Let me go! Officer! Don't you know me? You must, Mary! It's George, don't you know me? Let me go! Mary, please! Oh, don't do this to me! Mary, please help me! Where are our kids? What? I need you, Mary! Help me, Mary! Get away from me! Help! Help! Police! Mary, it's George! You're my wife! Clarence! Clarence! Clarence, where are you? Help me, Clarence! Get me back! I don't care what happens to me! Only get me back to my wife and kids! Help me, Clarence! Please! Please! I wanna live again! I wanna live again! Please! Oh god, please let me live again! George! Is that you, George? Now get out of here, Bert! You get out of here! Come get me close and I'll hit you again! What the Sam hell are you yelling for, George? Come on! George? George Burke, do you know me? No, you. I've been looking all over town for you. Where have you been? Hey, Burt! Burt, I'm alive again, Burt! You sure you're alright? Hey, your mouth's bleeding. It is? Hey, my mouth's bleeding. Burt, look at the blood come out of there, would you? Susan's petals! Susan's petals, there they are! What do you know about that? Merry Christmas, Burt! Well, Merry Christmas. Get in the car, I'll drive you home. You will, Bert? Well, you do that and turn the siren wide open. Merry Christmas, Bedford Falls! Hey, Merry Christmas, you wonderful old Billy alone! Merry Christmas, Mr. Porter! Yahoo! Mary? Mary, I'm home! Ha have you seen my wife? Hey, what is this? These people? These reporters? Hey, Merry Christmas, reporters! Mr. Bailey, there's a deficit. I know! Eight thousand dollars, I bet, huh? Uh, George, I've, I've got a little paper here. I'll bet it's a warrant for my arrest. Isn't it wonderful? Merry Christmas! Hey, where's Mary, you know? Look at this wonderful little drafty house, isn't it wonderful? Where's Mary? Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Kids! Pete! Janie! Tommy! I could eat you up! Where's your mother? She went looking for you with Uncle Billy! Daddy! Zuzu, Zuzu, my little ginger snap, how do you feel? Fine, Daddy. Not a smidge of temperature. Not a smidge. Hallelujah. George! Darling! It's Mommy! Mommy's home! Mary! George, where have you been? Oh, George! Mary. George! George! Oh, Mary, let me touch you. Oh, you're real. Oh, George! George! You have no idea what's happened to me. You have no idea what's happened either! Come on, George, quick! They're on their way! Who? Who is on their way? The police department? The FBI? The National Guard? I'm alive again, Mary! Listen, I'm alive again, Mary! Come on in here now! Now, you stand right over here, by the tree. Right here, and don't move. Don't move. I hear them now, George. It's a miracle! It's a miracle! Come on in, Uncle Billy! Everybody, in here! Isn't it wonderful? Mary did it, George! Mary did it! She told a few people you were in trouble, and they scattered all over town collecting money. They didn't even ask any questions, just said, if George is in trouble, you can count on me. You never saw anything like it. 
Hey, what is this, George? Another run on the bank? <laughs> Here you are. Merry Christmas. The line forms to the right, Mr. Gower. Merry Christmas. Step right up. I made the rounds on all my charge accounts. Mr. Martini! I busted the jukebox, too! Violet Bick! I'm not going to go, George. I changed my mind. I wouldn't have a roof over my head if it wasn't for you, George. Here you go. $242. I've been saving this money for a divorce. If I ever get a husband. Merry Christmas, George. Merry Christmas, Mother. Merry Christmas, everyone. Uh, just a minute. Quiet. Quiet, everybody. A telegram from London. Oh, London. Mr. Gower cables you need cash. Stop. My office instructed to advance you up to $25,000. Stop. Hee-haw and Merry Christmas. Sam Wainwright. Mary, I got up here from the airport as quickly as I could. The fool flew all the way up here in a blizzard. Hello, George. How are you? Harry, Harry. Mary, looks like I got here too late. Harry, how about your banquet in Washington? Oh, I left right in the middle of it, as soon as I got Mary's telegram. How about some wine? Good idea. A toast to my big brother George, the richest man in town. What's this book, George? Tom Sawyer. Look, there's an inscription. George, remember, no man is a failure who has friends. Thanks for the wings. Love, Clarence. What's that? That's a Christmas present from a very dear friend of mine. Look, Daddy, teacher says every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. That's right. That's right. Attaboy, Clarence. This has been MLT's presentation of It's a Wonderful Life. Please stay tuned for a program of popular holiday music. Signing off from MLT in Golden and wishing you and yours a very Merry Christmas. Good night.